Welcome to Dig Deeper. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome where we study the Bible one verse at a time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and we're going to continue. We're going to finish tonight with the book of Joel. For if you're watching, if you've never subscribed to Dig Deeper, please subscribe. Thumbs up. Share this video with as many people as possible. For those watching Latin America, bienvenidos a este programa Escabal, donde estudiamos las escrituras un versículo, versículo por versículo. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Thank you for being with us tonight, and I hope you have the greatest book you could ever read, the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest book you could ever read and you could ever study. El mejor libro que tú puedes leer y estudiar en tu vida es la Biblia, las santas escrituras, the holy scriptures. All right, well, thank you for joining us here on Dig Deeper. Let's have a little cranberry juice. Salud. All right. We only have three more verses and we will be done with the book of Joel. Next Monday, with the help of Almighty God, if the Lord would pray for the soon return, uh, well, the taking us home, taking the church home, the appearing of Christ for the church, he is coming for the church real soon. So if, and in the process, Jesus returns, comes to take the church home, comes to take the church home. If that happens, which it could happen right when we're doing this program, glory to God, we're going to be with him. So hallelujah. <laughs> and we're going to be with Jesus forever and ever. I pray you are ready for that moment. If not, at the end of this program, I invite you to repent of your sins and to trust in Jesus Christ. Si no conoces a Cristo como tu rey y sabo, como tu sábado personal, no te has arrepentido, oro que hoy sea, al fin de este programa, el día donde tú vas a hacer eso. Bienvenidos. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you direct everything we say, I say, and do let it be for your glory. Help us finish the book of Joel. Ayúdanos a terminar el libro de Joel, capítulo 3, versículo 19-21. Help us understand these last verses of the book of Joel, verses 19, 20, and 21. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. Let's hear from David Suquet as he reads... Joel chapter 3, verses 19, 20, 21. Vamos a terminar el libro de Joel, Joel y vamos a uh, versículos 19 a 21. Also, I want to remind you, beginning next week, next Monday, we're going to start, once again, 2 Timothy, written by the Apostle Paul, to a young man named Timothy. It is believed to be the last letter that the Apostle Paul wrote before being executed, before being martyred by the Roman Empire under Emperor Nero. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to start that next Monday in Jesus' mighty name. Again, we just thank the Lord for, for his presence here as we study God's Word. All right, let's hear David Suquet as he reads. Joel chapter 3, Joel capítulo 3, versículo 19 a 21. Let's go. And will water the valley of Acacias. But Egypt will be desolate, Edom a desert waste, because of violence done to the people of Judah, in whose land they shed innocent blood. Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem through all generations. Shall I leave their innocent blood unavenged? No, I will not. The Lord dwells in Zion. 
Okay, that's it. Very good. The Lord dwells in Zion. All right, let's read verse 19 again. We're in Joel chapter 3, verse 19. Here we go. Egypt shall be a desolation in Edom, which is inside of Jordan, a desolate wilderness because of the violence against the people of Judah. For they have for they have shed innocent blood in their land. Yes, Egypt. Now, if you look at it, Egypt also appears in the book of Zechariah. And they will be judged also because it looks as though in Zechariah, the, the people are going to have to go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And the nation who doesn't come to worship Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, in Jerusalem, no rain will happen. They will be judged. All right, here we go. Egypt and Edom will judge will be judged because of all, all the times they attacked Israel. Edom is part of modern day Jordan. Now the word desolation is the Hebrew word hor korba means waste, ruin, destruction, decayed place. That is what this is. This, it will become a decayed, destroyed, destroyed place. Now, Michael Rydelic, in his uh, commentary, says, The judgment on Egypt and Edom is fulfillment of God's covenant with Abraham. See, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. You know, in these nations, Egypt has never been the same. There's no Egyptian dynasty anymore. Eso te me know. Bible prophecy occurred. Okay, uh, verse 19, J. Vernon McGee says, God will judge Egypt and Edom, even in the millennial kingdom. They have always been enemies of the nation of Israel. And it seems that they may continue to do so in the, in the millennial reign, and they will be judged. You see, remember, again, God told Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. A nation who doesn't bless Israel is going to have major problems. Major problems. Okay, let me go. Let's go to uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 20. But Judah shall abide forever. In Jerusalem, from generation to generation. Generation to generation. Let's go over here first of all. Um, this is a reference to Christ's millennial kingdom on earth. Okay? And Judah shall abide forever. And Jerusalem, from generation to generation. That's the thing. It's hablando del milenio. Estamos hablando aquí que... En, en el milenio eh, va a haber una paz y todo el mundo va a tener que ir a Jerusalén a adorar a Cristo Jesús. All right, we got here. This is a reference to Christ's millennial kingdom on earth. This has not occurred yet. The Lord will dwell with his people. Abide is the Hebrew word yoshav, which means to dwell, to inhabit, to sit with, or to live with. Okay, again, he will abide, Judah, but Judah shall abide forever. In other words, will continue. It means they will dwell, they will inhabit forever. Ladies and gentlemen, that's as fulfillment. Again, God's word is fulfilled. You know, I was looking, listening to a, a pastor, Jack Gibbs, in Chino, California. He was going through, he only went through some of them. And it's excellent how he put all the prophecies of the Jesus first, just his first coming to the earth, God in the flesh. And he, he was up to, I think, 40, but it's 268. Hello? Did you hear me? And he would, he would show what the prophecy is, 
the Old Testament, what it said in the Old Testament, and what in how he was fulfilled in the New. Every he's up to the one I was watching was up to forty. He says, "I don't. I'm just giving you a little taste." There's two hundred and sixty-eight. Mucha profecía fueron cumplidas. Gloria a Dios, porque Dios es soberano. God is sovereign. Again, to abide is the Hebrew word yasha, means to means to dwell, to inhabit, to sit with, or to live with. Okay, this is this is a reference to the Christ millennial kingdom on earth. Okay, uh, we have here. John MacArthur says Judah forever. This is a reference to Christ's millennial kingdom on earth, which is yet to come. Again, this is verse 20. But Judah shall abide forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. It's looking for, the here uh, John MacArthur is looking to what? To the millennial reign. El reinado del Señor Jesucristo, where there will be no evil. Satan will be bound for a thousand years in the abyss. But then he's going to be released right, at the end of a thousand years. This is a reference to Christ's millennial kingdom on earth, which is yet to come. J. Vernon McGee says, but that is not where we see where we see him. For at this very moment, he is at God's right hand. At any moment, he's going to tell, Le va a Jesus, go get the church. Bring them home. Hallelujah. All right, vamos a Joel, capítulo 3, versículo 21. We rise, arrived at the end here. For I will, for I, yeah, for I will acquit them of the guilt of bloodshed whom I had have not yet acquitted. For the Lord dwells in Zion. For the Lord dwells in Zion. This is verse 21. It says the word acquit is the Hebrew word katai. Katai, which means to be innocent, to be eligible or enticed to. God forgives his people. They will receive forgiveness for their sins. We need, we read more about this in Zechariah chapter 12. Okay? God forgives his people. They, it says they will receive forgiveness for their sins. And like Paul says in Romans chapter 9, All Israel shall be saved. All Israel shall be saved. That's going to happen in uh, during the millennium, at the end of the tribulation period. All Israel shall be saved. Many Jews around the world are going to look to Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu. Blessed be the name of the Lord of Adonai. All right. Again, God forgives his people. They will receive forgiveness for their sins. We read more about that in Zechariah chapter 14. We'll look at that right now. Ronald Allen. It says, the Lord dwells in Zion. The Lord dwells in Zion. That's Ronald Allen in his, um, uh, this is his study Bible. Um, the Lord's presence in Jerusalem is the key to the blessing of the whole land. The Lord's presence in Jerusalem is the key to the blessing of the whole land. All right, Michael Rydelnik. This is Joel's prophecy accuse, focusing on the day of the Lord, for it sees not only the, the coming judgment of Israel for her unfaithfulness, but also Israel's deliverance and restoration. 
So you get to see two things. Does Joel's prophecy focusing on the day of the Lord forges not only on the coming judgment, not talking just Joel, the coming judgment, but but not only the coming judgment of Israel for their unfaithfulness, but also Israel's deliverance and restoration. See, God promises that he will restore. Where Israel is now, the Israelites, remember May 14, 1948, they became the nation of Israel. Okay? Fulfilling Bible prophecy, cumpliendo las profecías que dieron que iba a ocurrir. That happened, all right? That happened in in, in, in Israel, uh, of course. And that is what we're talking We're talking about, again, the the prophecy focusing on the day of the four seas, not only the coming judgment of Israel for their faithfulness, but also Israel's deliverance and restoration. And we're seeing that, Israel's deliverance and restoration. It will happen as Paul writes in the book of, of uh, the book of Romans, and he tells them, tells the people in Romans, this is Romans 8, 9, and 10, uh, or 9, 10, 11, excuse me, where he's talking about the fulfillment that Israel would be saved, all Israel. See, there are many Messianic Jews. I'm um, uh, um, pro, uh, profetas, uh, personas Messianic creyentes. Pero va a crecer mucho más durante la, los siete años de tribulación. All right, so let's look at this. Um, one of the main points to remember in, in Joel chapter 3, 19, 20, and 21. ¿Qué son las cosas importantes de recordarnos? Number one, judgment of Egypt, Edom. Number two, Christ reign on earth or at God's right hand at this time. Okay, number three, the land's presence in, the, the Lord's presence in Jerusalem during the millennial reign. Yes, he will rule. Jesus Christ will rule from Jerusalem. All the nations of the world, every prime minister, every president, every leader will have to bow their knees to Jesus Christ. It is the truth. All right, what are the uh, new points to remember in Joel 3, 19, 20, 21? Again, Egypt, judgment of Egypt and, uh, and uh, Edom. Number two, Christ's reason uh, reign of, of earth, on earth, or at God's right hand at this time. And number three, the Lord's presence in Jerusalem during the millennial reign. The Lord's presence in Jerusalem during the Lord's reign, during the millennial reign. Jesus Christ will rule. Every knee will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow. Every knee. Ladies and gentlemen, we are finishing the book of Joel. Let me read you. What, are the, what, what will the millennial reign of Christ be like? Como va a ser el millennium? There will no more, there will be no more sickness or pain. No va a haber más, más uh, enfermedad sobre la tierra. Va a terminar. Number two, Jesus Christ will judge in righteousness. Jesucristo va a reinar. He will make righteous acts, decisions. Number three, an enmity between man and animals will disappear. And yes, so we read that in, in the book of Isaiah Verses 6 through 9. Let me go there real quick here. Isaiah chapter 11. Okay, we're almost done with this book. Okay, Isaiah chapter 11. Okay, let's go there. Isaiah. Okay. Sometimes when the pages get old, they get to stick together. Okay, let's get... Here we go. Isaiah chapter 11. Now listen to this. You wouldn't believe this is amazing. Amazing. Here we go. It says here, this is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. 
The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. It says the leopard shall be shall be uh, shall die. Excuse me. Shall lie down with the young goat, the calf, and the young lion, and the families together, and a little child shall leave them. Do you hear that? A little child shall leave them. One more. It says, the cow and the bear shall graze together. That doesn't happen now. These young, the their young ones shall be shall be down together, and the lion shall eat straw. That's it. That's, that's exactly. Conditions on earth will change tremendously. In conclusion, and oh, and also number three, all enmity between man and animal will disappear. And number four, there will be no more wars. Hallelujah. Come on. No more wars. Enough is enough. Yeah. Se deben apagar. You know, this war in Ukraine should have ended a long time ago. But all walls, wars will be. There will be no wars. No more wars. No va a haber ninguna guerra sobre esta tierra. That's it. No need for military in the millennial reign. None. Okay. Conclusion. Uh, number three is energy between man and animals will disappear. Now, conclusion. The book of Joel prepares and warns people of the day of the Lord. Are you ready for what is coming on this earth? Do you have your house in order? All right. Conclusion also. You need to put God first in your life. Right? You need to put God first in your life before it is too late. America is time to repent. If you remember anything, si te acuerdas algo en este tiempo de hoy, es el llamado de Dios al país de los Estados Unidos y otros países del oeste de arrepentirse. You know, we've been a nation promoting sending missionaries, sending people, uh, lifting up the Lord Jesus, saltando a Cristo. We're not doing that as we should at this time. America, it's time to repent. Don't depend on your military, but on God Almighty. Put Jesus Christ first and he will defend, will, he will defend us. Pray for the military, but don't depend totally on them. Depend on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to an end of another book, the book of Joel. Next week, um, I hope you enjoyed this long journey, but we've come to an end of the book of Joel. Next week, we're going to start 2 Timothy, and we're going to go through three chapters of 2 Timothy, but we're going to start with the first. I usually do two or three, but next week we'll do introduction. All right. Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you repented of your sins? Have you realized that you're a sinner? You say, I'm a sinner? Yes. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I were born in sin. That sin separates us from a relationship with God the Father. So God the Father, in His mercy, sent His only begotten Son. Dios, en su misericordia, mandó a su Hijo unigénito a este mundo. ¿Para qué? Why did He send His Son? His only Son. Only begotten Son. Why? Because there needed to be a final sacrifice. Necesitaba haber un, un uh, sacrificio final. And Jesus Christ was that final sacrifice sacrifice. So Jesus came, he died on the cross. He shed his blood. Derramó su sangre por ti, por mí, en la cruz de Calvario, por el perdón de tus pecados. Three days later, he rose from the dead. He's alive and seated at the right hand of God. This week, yes, it was Palm Sunday. This Friday, Good Friday. And then next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to wait. Yeah, listen to me. We don't have to wait 
till Resurrection Sunday to get excited about the resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you sit in a church and the pastor preaches on the living, on a living Lord, a risen Lord, an empty tomb? How do you sit there and not... It's good. It's good. Come on. Wake up. Wake up in Jesus' name. All right. So if you haven't done so, I invite you today to repent of your sins. Ladies and gentlemen, you either follow Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, make him Lord of your life, trust him as your Savior, then when you do, your name will be written in the book of life. Your home will be heaven and you'll be with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But if you reject Jesus Christ, si, re, si re, rechazas a Cristo Jesús, tu fin es el infierno. Now, hell is just the like a holding cell. But at the end, of the thousand years, there's going to be a great white throne judgment. Un trono de gracia. Un trono de, uh, de juicio. The great white throne. Uh, el, el gran trono blanco. The great white throne. And it will be judgment. Because at that point, you will appear before Christ. And then you, who have rejected Jesus Christ will then be thrown into the lake of fire. The Bible calls that the second death. Don't wait for that. <laughs> Repent now. Repent of your sins. Trust in Jesus. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 89, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. That's the gift. Jesus Christ gave you that gift, and tonight, tonight, He did. He said He died for you, for you, and for me, for the forgiveness of our, of our sins. Three days later, rose from the dead. Today, this is your moment. Repent and trust in Jesus. I repent today. Romans ten nine that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you want to, you can pray at your home wherever you're at. Puedes orar ahora mismo donde tú estás o puedes orar conmigo. You can pray unto the Lord and say, Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. I put my trust in you. I put my faith in you as my Savior. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. I confess with my mouth that you died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth that God raised you from the dead. You're seated at the right hand of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, pray for every single person say yes to you. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Give them a hunger for your word and connect them to a church where they can be disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. If you gave your life to Christ, welcome. Welcome. Bienvenidos a la familia de Dios y posite tu confianza en Jesucristo. Let us know at trustjesus19 at gmail.com. That's trustjesus19 at gmail.com. Trustjesus19 at gmail.com. That's trustjesus19 at gmail.com. Thank you for being with us here on Dig Deeper. Amen. Amen. Next week we start 2 Timothy. Empezamos segundo Timoteo la próxima semana. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Gracias. Bienvenidos a la familia de Dios y dite tu vida a Cristo. Eh, te arrepentite. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, let us know at trustjesus19 at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Gracias por estar. In. Dig deeper. Amen. And don't forget, read the greatest book you could ever read. The Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. And remember, Shalu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Oren por la paz de Jerusalén. Jesus is coming, returning. He's returning for his church. He's coming for the church. And he is coming for the church. He's going to appear in the air to, for us. I pray you are ready. 
and study God's word. Do not be fooled in the last days and live for Jesus. Leen la Biblia, escondríñala, no pierden tiempo. Buenas noches. Live for Jesus. Shalom.